Hey folks, it's Nick Granville. Welcome to Guitar Daily. Um, so that was a little bit of a song of mine actually called Wishful Thinking from an album of the same name, my debut album. Um, and it's funny, um, the, the capo thing. Let me get my capo. Um, that album, when it came out, was something I tried new. I tried using a capo or a capo. Do you say capo or capo? Let me know in the comments below which it is, because I've always said capo, but I don't know if that's right. Um, but I used a capo to play jazz stuff, and I know that whole record was jazz stuff, and about 90% of it was with the capo. Capo. Um, and I, I remember at the time thinking, has anyone really done that? Not that I knew of. Um, maybe there's a good reason for it. <laughs> maybe what I did was crap. Who knows? But I thought today I thought I'd sort of talk about this this thing. It's an interesting one. Um, people people think it's cheating. I don't get how in music playing music and sounding good can ever be cheating. You either sound good or you don't. Period. How will you get there? The capo, the whatever tools you use, you just got to sound good. The only way it would be cheating, I think, is if you're actually like pretending you're playing live, but you're not. Looking at you, Instagram guitarists, you know, you guys who edit your videos on Instagram and make it pretend that you're playing some live gig when really you've gone through in logic and moved every note. But you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, um, so there's some debate whether you should put this thing on from the top or the bottom. Um, I've always done it from the top. And the only reason is it's just easier to get to. So that's what I do. I don't know, is it right? Um, I've heard people say that it's more in tune in the bottom. I don't think it makes any difference. I think one, one thing I've noticed is if you go like that and you kind of push one of the strings down, it'll actually lock it in place out of position and that you'll get tuning. So what I do is I put it on and I just sort of lightly adjust it once it's on and just put it back. And I kind of like it about the middle. I don't want it too close to the fret or it's hard to play that one. Now, the advantages of using this thing, let's put it on the fourth, third fret. So I put it on, I take it off, and I just kind of adjust it so the strings go on straight. Now you have to tune to the capo. I know, I know you can sort of adjust it around a little bit, whatever, but man, I just, I hate out of tune. So like, you know, take a second. So I'm using my tuner that's saying it's a C, that's an F, right? B flat, D, I'm using the tuner on the fractal. So, so now effectively, what we've done is move the open position of the guitar up to here, right? Now, you can play all of these chords without it. But that's really difficult. I'd have to go like this and I'd have to bar with that finger. And it just wouldn't sound the same. And you know, what about if it was something like... Um, struggle to get that or that I couldn't physically hold that note there it just sounds different right so that I think that's the key thing to it is is like it has a certain sound all of its own now I don't use it like if I can't play like like instead of playing if the chords were say um, G and then, um, I don't know, A. I could play both of those as backwards. There's no use, need, need in using a capo for those. But for anything like that, now that song you heard at the beginning, that was a tune of mine called Wishful Thinking from the album in the same name. I actually used the capo at the sixth fret. So the track you were hearing in the background was all played with this. Now these chords would be impossible without this. Impossible, you couldn't do it. Here's your first chord. Right, you have A flat, E flat, C, D. So an A flat major seven sharp eleven. And the next chord is an E my E flat minor a minor nine. One E flat, D flat, G flat. So there's your minor seven. Open F note is the nine and the seven. I couldn't physically reach that note, right? Now, if I play those same chords, but as like regular type voicings. As opposed to. 
they just sound completely different, right? And the interesting thing I remember the first time we played that song was at a Nation, the Nelson Jazz Festival and I just sort of come out with it, I was just messing around with some chords and stuff and I came up with this little chord progression and then we played it that night at the gig, it was an outdoor festival thing and I you know, wrote out the chat for the guys who had never played it before when we played it and I remember um, Alex Nyman, great saxophone player here, was playing the melody on a soprano and people clapped after the melody and I was like, well I guess they like that. Um, and then we recorded a couple of, I recorded a couple of gigs that we did around, just, you know, multi-track them. Um, and then we jumped in the studio and we tried to record it again and it just didn't have the same energy. So we used the live recording. Um, granted it's sonically not as good as it was in the studio, but there was just an energy that the guys had in the playing. So, but anyway, the most of that was, was all capo. <laughs> but from the song so so yeah it really does change the whole thing and, and like I said about 90% of that record I was playing with a capo or capo however you say it um, because it just sounds different I wanted voicings that you can't play any other way but it's more typically associated with country music so yeah the thing for me is I always put it on and then I readjust it so that it's coming in the strings are coming in perfectly straight I tune every time you know turn your volume off and just tune even on acoustic guitar you you know, you can kind of do this as light as possible, but you've got to be in tune, right? Like, and I know people go, oh, you can wiggle it, whatever. No, that's not, not close, not good enough tuning for me. Um, anyway, give it a try. Why not? Makes good music. Thanks so much for watching. I'll play you out on that progression, eh? I can take this off now.